time to pause for a moment and remind you the reason why we're here tonight is to support the student athletes at Seattle University. It's time for you to meet one of them. Three consecutive all-WAC team honors named the United Soccer Coaches All-Region Second Team in 2017. I'd like to introduce to you a junior, a member of the Seattle U Men's Soccer Team, Sergio Rivas. Hello, everyone. I can't believe it's my turn already. It's been so fun. And tonight, I want to thank Seattle University for giving me this amazing opportunity to come up here and speak to such great people at such an amazing event. Tonight, I would like to talk to you guys about who I am as a person and my journey to this stage. Standing up here right now, I still don't understand how I got up here. A kid from Albuquerque, New Mexico, actually a kid from Parral, Chihuahua, Mexico. How did I get up here? What has Seattle you done to me? <laughs> a better question would be, what hasn't Seattle you done for me? I am the second oldest of four boys. Yeah, four boys, God bless my mother. <laughs> Two who are younger, and the oldest actually just received his first baby. I'm very excited to be an uncle. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm also son of two amazing, hardworking parents who carry a great marriage. I was born in Parral, Chihuahua, Mexico, and raised till I was seven years old. Most of the memories that I have from back home are very happy and joyful. The reason why we had to move to the United States is because my dad's brother died in a car accident, and the company that they owned fell apart. Through this time, Mexico was going through a very bad economic depression not to mention that the drug cartels were killing a lot of people, especially in my town. The transition from Mexico to America was very difficult. The language barrier is by far the biggest challenge. Second and third grade were rough, as I got in a lot of trouble because I couldn't speak. When my teacher would ask me questions and I didn't respond, or I would ask my friends for help, I would get detention or my parents called. Around this time is when I started playing soccer, Believe it or not, I used to be a keeper. Yeah, 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 not anymore. Yeah. But growing up in Albuquerque, I would describe as growing up wearing a pair of nearsighted glasses. For those of you who don't understand what nearsighted glasses do for you, they help you see what's right in front of you, but not so much of what's far ahead of you. And people in Albuquerque, they don't see the big picture. They act for their present and not for their future. My friends and I would love to steal and fight during our middle school years. And thinking back now, we didn't do this because we're malicious, nor rude, nor mean. We did this because that's what Albuquerque kids do when they're bored. Or we're bored, let's go see what this backpack has. Or let's go see who wins this fight. But these thoughts and actions changed. I had an eye-opening moment. It was in high school as a 13-year-old my freshman year. It had a lot to do with my parents. My parents have worked in the, food, in the food industry their whole lives here in the United States. They work 50 plus hours to maintain the family. And as a kid, I never understood why my big brother and I would have to be the parents of the family while my parents were working. I never understood why I would come back home and my parents would be tired and sleeping. And even on a day off, they didn't want to take us to the park anymore. But I understood as a 13 year old, I understood that working 50 plus hours to earn $8 minimum wage is very hard to do. That's why as a kid, I wanted to do my part. So I started working two jobs. One was refing futsal, which is indoor soccer, and two was being a publicitor for advanced school of driving, which is bringing more people in. Yeah, around this time, I also started working for Jason's Deli. I had to fake my age though. It's a food industry too. And working at the food industry made me realize how proud I am of my parents for what they do and the hard work they put to maintain the family. But when I was 16 years old, I started receiving college offers. One being Seattle University. The reason why I chose Seattle University is embedded in the name. Seattle University is a private Catholic Jesuit institution. My family's Catholic. That's something that stood out to us. Not to mention that the sounders are right here. <laughs> yeah. 
the transition from New Mexico to Washington is very different. As many of you know, the weather. We, we don't go three months without seeing the sun in New Mexico, let me tell you that. But when I came in as a freshman, I don't know if there's a picture of you. Can you show the picture, please? Yeah. My hair, do you guys see, like my hair? 135 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> when I came in as a freshman, I was very selfish. I was very self-centered. All I wanted to do was go pro and make my family proud. But that changed as I got to meet a family I thought I was never going to be a part of. I got to meet the coaching staff. As many of you know, Peter Fewing, Nathan Delagon, Billy Colello, Jeff Cook, and Vince Volpe. If I could stand up here and talk to you guys, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I could stand up here and talk to you guys about how much they have helped me in these past three years, I would be up here for another two hours, and we don't have that time. My freshman year, it was amazing. Soccer was great. We went to the Sweet 16 for the first time in program history. Everything was just going my way. It wasn't until my sophomore year until I started developing these different types of feelings. And that started happening when soccer was not going as well. We ended up losing in the semis of the WAC tournament. My family was very far away, and I'm a very family-oriented person. In fact, I'm a mama's boy. <laughs> Being away from her for that long, it, it killed me. It killed me, physically and mentally. But through this time, I was also dealing with a lot of stresses, relationship problems, uh, where I was living and just being far away from home. I was going through something, and I knew that I needed to see somebody because I was losing passion for soccer. I was losing passion for school. And that's something I was going through depression. Uh, this is a very hard topic for me to talk about. I understand that it's a part of me and who I am now. I knew I needed to see somebody, and that somebody, I didn't know if he was specialized in this type of occasions. All I knew is I could trust him, and that person is Dan Scheid. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was not just a part of the staff. He was my friend, he was a role model, and he pointed me to the right direction. And that's something I'm never going to be able to rethink him for or be able to repay him for. And it's always going to be my heart. Around this time, I also received very powerful text messages. For some people in here, messages might not be a big thing for you guys, but for me, that meant the world. It helped me regain passion for soccer, for school. It helped me see that people love me and they care about me. And this person who sent this was Jeff Cook. He's a goalkeeper coach. He's not specialized in this type of occasions. But who's been through it all is Vince Volpe. If you guys don't know this person, you should probably get to know him already. He's been through my ups and my downs. He has helped me immensely, advice about anything I could ask for, about what I should wear, about what, the lease, if I should sign the lease or not, <laughs> everything. And to this point, I still don't know his position in men's soccer is. Yeah. No. It might be player of development. That's what I heard the other, the other time. But what I do know is that he's part of my family and I'm part of his. And that's something that's going to last forever. Every single person through this time period was very helpful in how I grew and who I am now. Standing up here right now as a junior in college, I can reflect. I can reflect on everything I've been through. I'm not 135 pounds anymore. I'm 165. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, don't I don't have that goofy hair look anymore. I have more sophisticated look. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Nah, come on. <laughs> And I'm not a business finance major anymore. I'm in strategic communications. And the reason why I want to study strategic communications is because I want to be a public speaker. I want to go back to Albuquerque, speak to the middle schoolers and the high schoolers. Tell them that they don't need to steal. They don't need to fight. Help them see the big picture. They could be doing something I'm doing or even greater. But when I graduate from Seattle University, I'm not just going to be graduating with a degree. 
I'm, I'm going to be graduating with the necessary skills to be successful in life. I'm going to be graduating with a family. And most important, I'm going to be graduating with unforgettable memories. And as many of you know, soccer is a big part of my life. And as I've won a lot of uh, my share of awards, the moments that I'm going to remember the most are the times where I spent in Dan's office or in the coach's office or with my teammates crying and how each and every single one of them has helped me to where I am now. And every single person in this room has the ability to change a person's life the way that Seattle University has changed my life for the better. All it takes is a small act of kindness. Thank you. Yeah.